Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Eddie Jennings and it feels like it's been absolutely forever since I've made any content. And I was looking at my YouTube Creator Studio page and in fact it has been forever. I think my last video was on June 3rd. Unfortunately life got in the way a, a bit and I think anyone watching this channel can probably empathize with that statement but I'm back and I am hoping to produce some content every week possibly uh, on and, and on Sundays every week and possibly midweek as well just depending on, on time and if I have content but to, to get back into it what I'd like to do is address a question that, that came up uh, from the comments in one of my Hyper-V videos and Scott Jackson was asking about how uh, networking what was was working within Hyper-V. He had a couple of VMs that uh, that, that were attached to the, the default switch and he was wondering where the IP address and such was coming from that, that was, was being assigned to the VMs. So in this video I'll dedicate that to um, trying to shed some light on that question. So uh, hopefully it will help you as, as well with working with Hyper-V and without further ado let's get started. So the question at hand is about um, the default virtual switch in Hyper-V on a Windows 10 Pro machine when, when you enable that feature and what's happening with DHCP. And there are some other questions just about some, some networking in general that I'll, I'll go through as well. So the short answer to the question, if I were to, I'm in Hyper-V Manager, if I were to go to my virtual switch manager and click default switch, the short answer as far as what's happening with DHCP it is coming from this default switch and it cannot be configured. Whatever network is handed out by this is what you're going to get. Unlike maybe your router that's running a DHCP server on it or you uh, run, run, run a separate uh, DHCP server where you can configure to your heart's content, that's not going to happen with this switch. And that's kind of by design because this default switch is really designed for I want to make some VMs, attach them to the switch so the VMs can talk to one another and they can um, talk to, to the LAN through NAT. And what's happening here as far as NAT, uh, network address translation, is this default switch is going to NAT traffic from, its, from, from the network to which it is connected. It's going to NAT that to whatever physical NIC that, that, that you have to send traffic on. Now, um, from from what I was from what I've, I've read and such, like I said, you you, you cannot um, you, you cannot alter the settings and such on this switch. From the earlier days of this being available, I think fall 2017 creators update is when the default switch became a thing for uh, Hyper-V on, on uh, Windows 10 Pro. Apparently, when you would restart your machine, uh, a completely different subnet would be handed out by this switch because it was recreated every time uh, Windows was restarted. I don't think that's a thing anymore because on uh, this machine here I've restarted a couple times in my preparation for this video and I have not seen the subnet change for this switch. It might still do that uh, but I if so I have not seen it yet. So the the other piece is that, that that was being asked about is kind of what's what what's happening behind the scenes with the, the the networking. I can't give you a whole lot of details about the default switch itself as far as what's going on with it. Simply, I, I, I could not find the resources to read on it, but I can tell you a little bit about the the traffic that that it's touching. So I'm going to take my uh, Fedora VM which should be configured to the default switch, and it is. I'm going to do IP address show dev eth0. I've, I know that eth0 is the name of the interface on this, so I'll save from having a, a lot of text on the screen. So it's getting its address 192.168.98.236 and slash 28 is the net mask which I believe is the same net mask that uh, that was listed in the original comment that was asking about this and that net mask would be 255, 255, 255, 240. Uh, I think the network ID for this is you know 98.224. I'm not 100% sure. It, it's been a while since I've had to do um, Subnetting it just just in my head. Otherwise, you can you can um, use the bitwise and operation to, to figure it out. And you can um, consult good old Doctor Google about how to do uh, anding if you're if you're interested in that. So 
This, if I had an, another VM attached to it, I would be able to ping that VM because it would also be getting an address that's within the subnet. I can ping the host operating system, 192.168.155. I can ping another host that's on the network. One twenty-eight is a KVM host that I have, and I can also ping something on the internet. 8.8.8.8 is one of Google's DNS servers. So all, all of that traffic flows. Now, I mentioned before that traffic is NATed. So what that's going to mean, in particular, this 192.168.1.128 host, remember the actual IP address of this VM is 192.168.98.236. If I were to go into the KVM host, Dev ETH 1. It doesn't exist, it should exist. ENO 1. I'm sorry about that. Usually I try to have all that worked out. There we go. All right, so. Proof positive that 192.168.1.128 is the IP address of the NIC of my KVM server that is on the subnet. And if I were to do IP neighbor, notice that this IP address here, the 192.168.98.236, does not appear with IP neighbor. IP neighbor is basically showing you the ARP table for my KVM host, but rather, 192.168.1.255 is, and that's because traffic from 192.168.98.236 is being netted to the IP address of my Hyper-V host, my, my uh, Windows 10 machine, thus traffic's going to appear to other hosts as it's coming from the 192.168.155. And just proof positive here, I have IP config that I ran on my, um, my actual Hyper-V host, and that is the IP address for it. Now, if I were to try to ping from KVM, my, my KVM host, and try to ping the Fedora test VM, this is going to fail. So I'll let it run for a couple of seconds or so. And you see four packets transmitted, zero received, 100% loss. And that's because there is no route telling the KVM host how to get to this particular subnet. Or the 236 is not the subnet, but I believe, like I said, I believe it's 224 is that particular network. There's no route for that. And if I were to do IP route, obviously no route there. My default route is the actual router on my LAN, and if I were to go into the, the router on my LAN, there's not going to be a route to that particular subnet. So therefore, traffic originating outside of that subnet is is not, there. there there's no route to, to get to it. So the question is, how was, how, I, how, how, how could I get the echo reply when I pinged it? Well, that's because, like I said, the traffic is being added to 192.168.155 and I can ping that all day from my KVM host. And so the the question that then becomes I'm I'm not I'm not sure how, how familiar you are with that. How is traffic getting, you know, it's being that echo reply is being sent back to here. How is it getting to the VM? Well on the Windows machine, if I were to do get net nat session you will see that there's an internal source address, an internal source port. So what's happening is when the traffic gets back to the NIC that is 192.168.155, which is really that external switch, the external switch is going to see traffic that's bound for this port 6968 
or excuse me, it's going to see traffic that is coming into port 49776, um, and it's going to realize that, that is going to be, um, no, I told you wrong. My apologies about that. And that, and that can sometimes be a little confusing. The, the traffic that is coming back to the 192.168.55 virtual switch is going to be destined for this port, which it knows that it needs to send. The virtual switch will send traffic to this IP address because traffic coming back from the KVM host was coming destined to, to um, this particular port. So it's kind of that, that in a nutshell there, but that's that's how the Fedora test is able to send traffic to one to the KVM host and get traffic back because of NAP, but the KVM host cannot um, cannot send traffic directly to the Fedora test VM. So the question becomes, all right, how about the Hyper-V host itself? Because that's 192.168.155, it's on a different subnet. Can it ping the, um, the Fedora test VM? And the answer to that is yes. Oops, I forgot what that IP is, 98.236. Okay, well, I just said that the KVM host can't because it's on a different subnet but the Hyper-V host can. How is it possible? Well, if you were to do the route print command, you will see that in the IPv4 route table, there is a route to this subnet through interface 192.168.225. That interface should sound familiar because if I were to do IP config, there is an interface that has that IP address. And so what's happening when this IP address is trying to ping the Fedora host, the routing table is saying traffic destined for this particular subnet needs to go to this interface, which is a direct connected interface to your host, thus traffic's able to, to travel. That can be a little confusing, but if you if you kind of think about how how the the, the, the hop and such works, then that 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 will work for you. So um, uh, a brief review to the initial question of where is DHCP coming from? That is just coming from the Hyper-V the uh, default virtual switch itself, and is is non-configurable. And how the networking works for that that um, virtual switch is natted to one of your physical interfaces, and that NAT allows traffic to, um, to, well, really the the the, the routing on the, the the switch does this, but that plus NAT allows traffic to go outside of the local network that that default switch is, and the NAT will allow that traffic to come back because the address to which it is natted is on on a network that would eventually be found through through other routers but that will not allow traffic originating from the outside to be able to to hit that host now if you don't want to have this complexity you make an external switch which is going to put the the host on the actual um, LAN that your physical NIC is connected to and you don't have the, the, the complexity of NAT and then your VMs would be able to talk to each other as well as outside um, outside hosts being able to, to connect in and I'll do a little brief demonstration of that just to kind of give you proof positive there so let me change the virtual switch to test external switch I'm going to bring down, I believe, ETH0, name of the neck here. Oh, well, it, 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 it's already got got its DHCP um, re request done. I was going to bring down and up the interface to be able to get that. But it was put on to, or the DHCP um, address that, that it received from the router on my actual LAN is 192.168.144. And so if I were to ping the KVM machine again, I 
I go back to the KVM machine and do IP neighbor show you'll now see an entry in the ARP table for 192.168.144 because since it's using the external switch it's no longer being being natted so I, I hope this this answered your, your question and gave you a little bit more information about networking feel free um, to, to comment for with other questions I'll, I'll try to answer them the best I can and I hope for everyone else that that was watching this video you you found the the information useful if you did make sure you like and subscribe to the channel so you can be aware of future content and enjoy the for for me today and, and, and enjoy the rest of your weekend see you the next time